Last week, Ross Baird introduced the Unreasonable Village Fund. There's $150,000 at stake, and two of our entrepreneurs will be selected by their peers to receive $75,000. Needless to say, after that introduction, the heat is on, and they're working rigorously around the clock to redefine and really morph their business models into something viable. The $75,000 from the village capital could be incredible, uh, an incredible opportunity for us. I think one of the problems we're facing right now is that we've created a product and we don't yet have a fully flushed out business model. So to know exactly where we'd allocate those funds and what exactly we need to get our pilot on the ground um, is still up in the air. So that's what we're really hoping to figure out in the next two weeks. 25 brilliant entrepreneurs working on ventures in 17 countries and hailing from six continents will convene this summer in Boulder. Living under the same roof and sharing the same meals for 10 weeks, they have convened in Boulder this summer for one reason, to create ventures that future generations will remember as having changed the world. Ventures that will effectively address a social or environmental need, that are financially self-sustaining, and that will ultimately scale to meet the needs of at least one million people. It's no big deal. As a Purdue University senior in industrial design, Raphael Smith decided to help millions of people displaced by disaster. It's a two-story collapsible shelter that ships in a four by eight by two structure. Um, it's three roomed and two of the rooms are fully insulated. Uh, the concept is intended to provide a more comfortable place to live during their time of displacement. I heard a great analogy of how to explain industrial design. So we are to products what architects are to buildings. I, I had left the academic practice and I was thrown into the real world of, of product design. And in some senses I was really disappointed. I, I remember I would leave work and I was designing vacuum cleaners and pooper scoop. I, I worked on a pooper scooper project. The experience was incredible, um, but I would leave work saying I'm designing products that are going to end up on the shelf at a retail store. I came across several articles that talked about the terrible living conditions in relief camps and refugee camps. They talked about tents rotting, um, people not surviving winters because of the shelter they were provided. Really easy as a designer for me to think the big picture, the vision, that, that, that's what I love to do. You know, the, the dreamy stuff is what I love to do. Our next step is getting from prototype to manufacturable product. So every two weeks, we draw six names out of a hat, and six of our entrepreneurs present in an Ignite format. You have 20 slides of a PowerPoint, 15 seconds per slide, and five minutes total to present. There are 650 million people with disabilities in the world, representing twice, more than twice, the population of the US. It's the largest and most neglected minority in the world. The teacher to student ratio is 2 to 150 on average. How can we go from those rote learning memorization to something that can enable the children? So the solution we came up with is the Mess Express Cab Card. It's a prepaid taxi card, kind of like a meal plan for safe transportation. So you really have to be spot on with every single word you say. It has to be down to the T. What about somebody coming in and recognizing you've identified a market? trying to capture the market. Do you have any component of this that, that uh, includes uh, a sanitation like toilets? Would you figure out some way to maybe give it out for a cheap price to people that are living really under the poverty lines? My name is Julian Dryman. I'm 11 years old and I'm from Boulder, Colorado. So it was really interesting after the Ignite pitch to the, for the meet and greet to actually be able to meet the fellows and you know ask them one-on-one -on -one questions. How do I convince, you know, someone else that we're on the, on the path? You can't develop a, par a product away from your customers. Yeah, that the key is being where your customers are. Absolutely. You know, Raphael is an exceptional, he's a passionate designer, maybe world class. Um, but I think one thing he's lacking, and he knows he's lacking, are fundamental business skills. You know, how do you actually create a viable company? Yeah, yeah, exactly. How much taller is it now with the third floor? Yeah, it's probably like 
three, three or four feet taller than the other one. Oof. So not that much. But I think that for the amount of space you're getting, yeah, it's not that much larger. He's very conscious of the fact that he's he's building something uh, for a situation he hasn't experienced. Um, and that also, I think, is a strength. The people who do know what they're talking about, that's been the biggest criticism, is, mm -hmm. you know, I'm a middle-class American designing a product for a situation I've never experienced. Yeah. Because he acknowledges that, and because he's asking people who have that experience, and really trying to line himself up to travel and, and see uh, what an internally displaced persons camp looks like. We're looking at producing these in the States, maybe? Yeah, I mean, you know, once you got people, we... once you got people who are comfortable, got a place to keep their stuff, then he can start to do some interventions. Raphael is really showing his entrepreneurial hunger, utilizing the mentors not just for their workshops, but in a one-on-one -on -one setting. Meeting with Tom Nastas, who's former senior advisor to the Russian venture company, who has experience working with venture capital in emerging markets all around the world. Have you looked at how well this thing flies? Because when, you're, when you're flying, there's basically two considerations. There's weight and there's volume. To Elnor Rosenrot, former investor at Innisight Ventures and the current vice president of growth platforms at LG Electronics. You could always come back and say, you know what, forget that. We're not doing we're not doing air freight. Mm -hmm. We're going in the next in the second phase where the stuff gets shipped and that's and that's that, that's perfectly fine. But if you want to be the first response, then you need to think about air freight. Something we selected for at the institute was agile entrepreneurs. And as soon as they realize that their model isn't perfect, that they're willing to completely change it or to tweak this. And Raphael is one of those people who's willing to completely change it. You know, I can't be confident that this whole thing that looks beautiful on paper will work, but if it doesn't, being on the ground will point us in what direction it needs to go. Hmm. That makes perfect sense. That makes perfect sense. No, thanks for helping me think through this. Yeah, yeah man. No doubt. Clarifies. I wouldn't have it any other way. Uh, 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 all right, f it. <laughs> <laughs> After the hike with Raphael, uh, you know, I'm, I'm pretty damn excited about what he's doing. Um, I just want to remind everyone that Rod explicitly said not to go if it was really raging, which it is. It um, is. It doesn't look raging. Honestly, I think it's way too fast, but let's see what happens when these two guys do it. So everyone pay fifteen dollars for the tube. <laughs> and in terms of investment, we we can say it was not the smartest thing to do. <laughs> the last two days, the mentor sessions have changed my life. I've built an entire business model off of two mentor sessions. So this is real, real rough. So this is Uber Shelter. We're in charge of. Providing, creating and providing and producing the shelters, right? But then we also get a media on board saying, okay, if these players do their bit, would you cover a news story? So we have UPS do the storage, we produce the shelters, they store it, and then we have everyone on board saying when the next disaster strikes, UPS dedicates eight planes, they ship them in. You know, CNN does the news story, they're happy, and then it's already there. Instead of waiting for the disaster to happen, they try scrambling, trying to get everything. If we have an underwriting partner, say Home Depot or Lowe's, that they're bringing in the materials to build the shelters, this cuts out so many inefficiencies of waiting until something happens and then scrambling to find the resources. Say we're going to Haiti, we build you know, production facilities on the ground, we're employing local Haitian labor, possibly using local materials and investing in the community instead of shipping money out. So there's 42 million people displaced by natural disaster and war, and our mission at the Uber Shelter is to better lives through design. I'm here until August. I'm a designer. If you guys have skills in any other it's business models, if it's um, engineering, biology, whatever it is, I have a full-scale prototype of the shelter here, and I would love for you guys to sit down, we'll grab some iced tea, sit in the shelter, and just brainstorm. So I really challenge you guys, come see me, and let's brainstorm together. When Raphael first came to the Institute, he didn't even have a business model. And over these past couple weeks, it's been, uh, it's been amazing to watch him progress and to really define what he's doing as a company. Uh, and I'm excited to see where that goes. Everywhere I turn, there's a bright light blinking. Should I be concerned? Always a new 